right, welcome to the session. Um, introduction to the online library. We're taking questions through the Q&A right now. And uh, the hello is for you to chat amongst yourselves. Uh, what we're going to cover is an introduction to the library services, just a bit of an overview, how to contact us, all the information you could possibly want about your library account, which is very important. And then we'll talk about how to get to know the library a little bit better. Like what is, does the library have to support your program and to support you as a student? Um, to do those, we produce these things called uh, subject guides. They're sort of portals on the library that um, will uh, give you a bit more information about what the library has for you and a bit more information about skills and know to uh, things that you need to know to use the library and in addition, be a good student. And then finally, we'll go live if I feel really brave. We'll go live and we'll take a look at um, searching the library as well. So we'll do a look at the subject guides live and a search in our OneSearch tool. Um, the handout for this session, if you would like a handout, on the library page, we have the tools for online learning box. So I'll get Amy to put that in the Q&A for you. So we have that available to you. Go. Okay, so at the bottom of the page is the Q&A. Next, where you would see your chat box. So the Q&A is where you can put in your questions. And uh, my colleague Amy will be monitoring those through the session. This is unfortunately a lot of me talking. Sorry about that. And uh, hopefully we'll share the handout with you, which can be found on the online library page. And I'll show you where it is when we go live. But first, I just want to get some explanations about the library over with, and uh, then we can continue. All right, so um, we're so lucky. Uh, I'm from the Ottawa campus, so is Amy. But we work closely with our colleagues at Pembroke and Perth campus. And we were so happy to have had upgrades to our physical space over the past couple of years. And we were looking forward to sharing them. And then we all got sent home. Um, but I'm happy to say starting September 7th, which is today, we will start having staff on campuses. We're still a little limited in space um, because we have to have uh, distancing and spacing for ventilation purposes. So the, the, sorry, the Ottawa campus, we can have 50 people. So there's 50 chairs. Um, Pembroke can have 25 people. And Perth, I believe, will be staffed uh, three days a week. Okay, and we will be staffing Pembroke and Ottawa, uh, usually from eight to five as well. So uh, there will be friendly staff to greet you uh, on the campuses if you are on campus. Um, basically, they if you don't have to go on campus for a purpose, they'd rather you didn't. But certainly if you need to use uh, the photocopiers or the printers or, or borrow from the library, you can come on campus. I will be talking a lot about the library online resources, which are available to everyone without coming on campus. So hopefully they'll be useful to you if you're studying at a distance. I miss being on campus personally. Um, let's see, I want to talk to you about the Student Learning Center. That's one of our services that is available. Um, the Student Learning Center is based, is made up of two parts. One part is coaches and one part is peer tutoring. Okay, uh, coaches is a free service that all students can take advantage of and a coach will give a student uh, basic guidance for writing uh, papers, for example, math, um, anatomy, and there's an English conversation group as well. And I might have missed one. Um, you can book online for a coach uh, and it will be done through Zoom and it will either be individual or group depending on the topic at that time. Uh, peer tutoring is if you're having issues with a course you're doing and you know that maybe you'll need support with that course throughout your program. Um, you can apply to the peer tutor center to get a, a, a peer tutor. And what is a peer tutor? A peer tutor is a student like you who has finished the course already, done really well, has been recommended to be a tutor by their teacher and has done the tutoring training. So you'll be matched with them during the term. Uh, there is a fee involved uh, because the peer tutors are paid. So if you are in your second year and you're interested, 
it might be a good idea to apply. Um, and the peer tutoring uh, through the Ottawa campus uh, covers Pembroke and Perth as well if they want, although they also have additional uh, tutoring at the Pembroke campus. Okay, and I'll show you where the information is on that when we get to our website. So we're going to talk a lot about the resources that are free. So the resources from Algonquin College, the library that subscribes, they are free for you to use, either the physical or the online. So first of all, how to contact us, how to ask us questions. Uh, you can contact the library always at library at algonquincollege.com. And our email actually is algonquincollege.com slash library. Uh, we have live chat. So on our webpage down in the corner, the right corner, you might see a green box that says chat with the library or ask us. That is where you can talk to a real person. Uh, we will be having the chat available uh, Monday to Fridays, 8 to 8. Sorry, Monday to Thursday, 8 to 8. Friday, 8 to 5. Okay, hopefully I explained that well. Uh, you can also book a one-on-one -on -one appointment. So if I talk about a database today for your program and you want to know more about how to use it, you can book an appointment with us and we'll do a Zoom session with you to learn more about it. If you want to learn more about research skills, evaluating websites, uh, determining if something is fake news, that's the kind of stuff we can support you with. Uh, we do offer a whole bunch of online workshops as well. Uh, the workshops are like this one. Uh, we also do ones in citation for APA style, IEEE, uh, identifying, um, evaluating materials. Uh, counseling also offers workshops, so they would be on topics such as um, uh, anxiety with tests, uh, dealing with procrastination. And the coaches and peer tutors also deal with sessions that uh, have more to do with uh, basics in math uh, and English. So all the workshops are offered by people that have background in the things that they can offer and they're for you to take at your own time, okay? All right. Okay, so how does the library work? What's available? Okay, it's different than what's available online. Um, so most of our collection, for those of you that are working at a distance, is online. So 85% of our collection is online materials. Uh, this comes from different bundles, uh, databases, providers, vendors that we license for Algonquin College students' use. So it's stuff that if you could find it on the web or um, uh, if you're looking for a journal online, you would have to subscribe to it. You'd have to pay for it. But we're paying for it so you can have access to it. So it includes things such as ebooks, uh, online video, video tutorials, scholarly and trade journals, they're professional, uh, newspapers, magazines, and we have additional specialized content like statistics, case law, business reports, things like that. All right, uh, so 85% of the collection, the majority of the collection is online. So that is what you would access going through the library main page at algonquincollege.com slash library. We also have print books. So if I add the two collections together from Perth, Pembroke, and Ottawa, I get about 50,000 items. So it's not a very big collection, but we do loan between the campuses. Um, so that's about 35% of our collection is physical. If you are on campus, uh, you can go to your library and uh, ask the staff when they're, the library is staffed to get an item from the collection for you, or you can ask an item from another campus to be brought to your campus, okay? You can also uh, request physical items by placing a hold on them. And I will demonstrate how to place a hold. Uh, those of you that have used the public library, uh, you may know how to do this, but I'll explain this in a bit. Um, so placing a hold means that you've requested an item through our online portal, through the OneSearch or through the catalog, and the library will get it ready for you to come pick up. So it uh, reduces the amount of time that you would be on campus if you didn't have to come on campus for regular schools. In general, a borrowing a period is two weeks, but you can renew twice. And you would use your library account, which I also will speak about in a moment, uh, to renew. Okay. Uh, Ebook uh, borrowing periods, if you download them, it's different. It depends on which publisher we got the ebook from. So I'll hopefully also try to demonstrate that as well. All right. 
Okay, so your library account, very important. Because the material that we're providing to you is mostly subscribed, we can't let everyone have it. So only our students and faculty are permitted to access this material. So you have to get behind the library's firewall to access it. And you do this with your library account. Your library account is made up of your student number as a login, and your PIN is the last four numbers of your student number. Don't worry too much about remembering this. The login page, when it comes up, will remind you what your login is and what your PIN is, okay? Uh, your, library your library account also permits you to place holds on materials as well as accessing the digital resources. Okay, so I will demonstrate that. Um, when you are borrowing from the collection, I don't know how many of you might be borrowing from the collection. Um, if you need to borrow from the collection, you need three things, okay? You, you need to be able to come on campus to pick up and return. You need a student card, which is also your library card, and you will need your library account to place the hold originally if you want to do it that way. Okay, uh, through the handout link, Tools for Online Learning, I've got a direct link uh, to applying for a student card if you don't have one. Okay, and remember, student cards are only available to people that can come on campus because you have to come on campus to pick them up. All right. All right, uh, the library does have printers and photocopiers, but so does the rest of the college. So they're available all over the place. All right, so this is the screen you should see uh, if they're asking for your library account. So it is Algonquin Green, it's very friendly, and it's very small print here, but hopefully when I log in later, it'll be bigger. Uh, you can see that it's t reminding you that your login is your student number and your PIN is the last four numbers of your student number. And I may not have closed my window in the last session, so I might have to do that before we go live. All right, okay. Here's the part where you have to pay attention. We have two exceptions for accessing databases. These two exceptions do not use your library account. They use your network account. One of these databases is called Safari by O'Reilly, and it's a technical ebook database plus tutorial videos. And the other one is called LinkedIn Learning, and it is complete e-tutorials, okay? Um, I want you to know about these because you use your network account to set up an account uh, with LinkedIn and with Safari. And we actually do have a subject guide that will explain how to use Safari and set up your account. Um, I wanted you to know about these two databases especially because the tutorials are something that could be useful to you um, to improve your skills on something outside of class as well as in class and that many of your faculty may use videos from LinkedIn Learning in your Brightspace class. So if you have your account all ready to go, you're set. Okay, so those are two exceptions. So the login screen, when you click on those two databases in the library portal or in Brightspace, uh, will look more like your network login for the college. Okay, and your library account is automatic, by the way. You, do not, you should not have to do anything to set up your library account. It should automatically be your login and your PIN. Okay, uh, you're logging in as your student number and you're pinned the last four numbers of your student number. Um, so we're going to take a look at the subject guides to learn a little bit about what supports the library has for you for learning and how you can find out a little bit more about what the library provides for you to support your program that you're in. So we'll go live and we'll look at the subject guides. Then I want to explain a little bit about how our OneSearch tool, tool works. So how do you search most of our resources that we have? Um, we have what's called the OneSearch tool. It sits in the middle of our website. Uh, you know it's important because it takes up a lot of space on our website. And uh, it searches across most of the resources we have at Algonquin College Library in OneSearch, which is why we named it OneSearch. So it pulls content from our catalog. So we have an old fashioned online library catalog uh, where we catalog books and ebooks. Okay, so if you only wanted to look for books or ebooks, 
you would have a smaller search by going into the catalog. But those materials are also pulled up into a search in the OneSearch. Okay. Then you also have digital resources. So that's all our licensed material. Uh, we have an A to Z list of all the different databases we have under the digital resources button on our front page. And this content is also pulled up into the OneSearch. So you're searching across many resources at once. Many of these resources come from different companies, so they will have different search interfaces. But when you're in the OneSearch, everything will search the same. Okay. Uh, the digital resource button is nice to know because maybe a teacher will mention a database they prefer to you to use, or you might see one in the subject guide, but you don't have to go back to your subject guide. You can find it here. Another nice tool we have is the search publications tool. This is a great tool for those of you that want to use the library and the web because both contents are really good for the research that you're going to do. So certainly, uh, if you're using the web uh, for your resources, go for it. Um, but the one issue is that we find that the library contents, if you're looking for articles, is a bit stronger. Okay, So if you're looking for an article for an assignment and you choose Google, you may find an article, the title looks good, the date looks good, the description looks good, but they're going to make you pay or ask you to pay to access what we call the full text of the article, okay, to actually see it. To get at this article, what might help is if you take, cut and paste the name of that magazine, journal, or newspaper, the source for that article, come back to your library page, open the search publications tool, paste the name of the journal in, and it will search all our databases that tell you if we have access to that title. So you can get that content, the full text, free of charge. Okay. And just another way to explain, so I make sure I am explaining to you what the one search searches. It's Google-like, but it's not searching Google. It's searching library content. So all at once, it searches print and most of our online content in one search. Okay, I think I'm ready to go online. So I might have to close a window and open a window so I can demonstrate to you the on um, the logging in process. So just one second. I'm going to stop sharing. You can get a really horrible big picture of me, which no one wants. And I'm just going to close all those pages and then open a new one so I can demonstrate the login for you. And I'm going to double make sure I'm sharing correctly. Okay, hopefully I'm sharing correctly. So you should be seeing a lot of green and you should be looking at my version of algonquincollege.com slash library. Okay, so we're going to do a quick tour around the library page. All right, just coming down a little bit. Okay, your handout for today is Tools for Remote Learning. Okay, so this will walk through all the things I'm talking about and have the proper links to get you to the answers of what you're seeking. The link to the Peer Tutoring and Coaching page is right there, Student Learning Center. And the Learning Portal, which contains additional supportive materials uh, for you as a student who is learning at a college. Okay, our FAQs are Frequently Asked Questions. So every time we get a question through the chat or through the library uh, email, uh, we add the answer and the question to our frequently asked questions. So if you need help when there are no people available in person or through Library Life chat, maybe you'll find the answer to your question in the FAQs. Okay, and our workshop page. There we go. So I have the workshops is up here. It's so important. It's in the main tab. So for right now, I want to introduce you to what the library has for you according to what program you're in. So we're going to take a look at the subject guides. Okay, so subject guides do two things. We do have a question about market reports. If market, one of, you, one yeah, of those. Yeah. Yes, our Mac marketing business database uh, business subject guide is enormous. Um, the product that I use, I kind of saw the question there for a second. We have a product called Ibis World that contains our industry reports. That's who we subscribe to. 
but the other companies are excellent. We just don't have them. And also in Business Source Complete also would have market reports. So we have specific databases that would have that kind of content. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, within your subject guide, this is the kind of stuff you'll find out is what do we have for this? Okay, so the subject guides are for two things. One is to introduce a user to what the library has for your program and the type of research you're gonna be doing. Two is explaining about library things to you or as supporting your research as a student. So you can see there's an about the library there. There's essential skills. Essential skills explain a lot of things. So there's help for communication. Everyone needs help writing a paper. I do. Uh, citing sources and avoiding plagiarism. That's our number one use subject guide because we have to learn what plagiarism is. We have to learn how to avoid it. And the number one way to avoid it is to cite properly the resources you use in a paper or project. Okay, so you can see the different kinds of things we have. There is the subject guide for learning more about how to use, how to set up your account for LinkedIn Learning. Okay, we also have one on ebooks. So for those of you that are going to be using ebooks more, then you're going to be using print books because you're at a distance. There is a guide for that as well. Okay, so you can see them all kinds of guides. There's a special one for learning how to zoom better too. Okay, so now we'll take a quick look at the ones for the um, subjects or the programs that you're in. So we, we started off trying to ignore, uh, organize things by school, that fell apart. Uh, you can view all the guides in order. Okay, So you can see there's advertising right there. So just because, say if you're in a program, there is overlap. So um, say you are doing marketing in the business field, you can also use the advertising guide. I mean, there is that overlap there as well. So take, it, take an eye out to see if there are overlapping guides that relate to the fields that you might be studying in. All right. So I'm just going to go into the business guides because we had that question and we have a very big guide. It's a little different than our regular guides. Okay. Not all our guides are done with this amount of detail, but the business and entrepreneur guide has many tabs and what it does under each tab is it says, this is a couple of tips about how you would do this kind of search on the web and what the library has so you can do this kind of search through the library. So this is where you might find out about specific databases that we have that do specific things, or more importantly, if we have a database that is not in the OneSearch. So if the database is not in the OneSearch, you had to search it by itself, okay? Or if a database does a very specific search, some, and even if it is in the OneSearch, it might be a quicker, faster search to go into it by itself because you will have less clutter in your results. I'm just going to show you a more general or more uh, regular subject guide. I'm going to go to Community and Social Sciences. I hope that makes somebody happy. I'm going to go into Deve Developmental Services Worker Guide. So this is more of the regular type guides that we have. All of them include a link to our frequently asked questions, research support, and avoiding plagiarism and citations. So all guides have those four buttons in them, okay? Because they're common to everybody. Where we get a little bit more specific to your program is the other three buttons. So the way we thought about it was, is I was a student and I wanna know if the library has books, eBooks and videos, how would I, what do they have? Do they have them? Uh, database and journals, and then web resources. So why would we have web resources when you're all perfectly capable of searching the web yourself? Okay, uh, We have web resources in the subject guides because sometimes the answer is a web resource. And so we try to share with you um, the web resources for this subject area that come up when we're helping other students with assignments. We see certain web websites come up and we check them and make sure they're well maintained. We think, okay, we should share this. Okay, and also faculty recommend stuff to us as well. So faculty also say, you know, this, this website with this legislation for this program is really important. Can you put it in the guide and share it with my students? So this is how we share the awareness of websites that might be handy for you. All right, 
So databases and journal button. You may also see this button as articles in your guide. So this is where we talk about the different subscriptions that we have for your program. This is where you'd find out. Okay. So I have my database journals and articles listed. These are specific databases related to this field. Okay, and you can see there's quite a few. So this is where you start thinking, okay, to do proper search in this field, it looks like I have eight, 12, 15 different databases to search. And when I go in them, the search box is different and they search differently and they show me stuff differently. So you can think, okay, great. I can do a quick search in the one search, searching across most of these resources at once. And my search will look the same, even though the content is coming from different databases. Okay. But still, it's good to know that there's specific databases that do specific things if you have to focus on a topic or on content type. So we particularly have a sociology database. So if you're doing a project in sociology, you could do a search in one search, or you could narrow your search and focus on just the one database that does the one thing. Okay. And there we have the link there to LinkedIn Learning. Okay. I'll come back to that in a second. That's listed because the tutorials are important. Uh, we also list journals that your faculty tell us are important. A lot of research for a lot of you will be using scholarly or academic resources. And it might be the first time that you have to use this kind of tool. So we try to guide you towards important uh, titles in your field. So a scholarly or academic journal is a journal article written by professionals for other professionals. And then this colleague also likes to put in articles that she thinks are important in there as well. And then we have a quick search, so you don't have to get out and go back to the one search to search, a quick search for journals and eBooks, and a little reminder on how to log in off campus, because to link to any of these things, you'll be asked to log in. Okay. Then eBooks and videos, we talk you through again, how to find this type of content. So for eBooks, we give you a sample of ebooks for different topics. They're all coming from different databases. Okay, so they all have a different look and feel. Then the important ebook databases, these are the two biggest ebook databases we deal with that cover this topic. Okay, so you can think, okay, I can search for ebooks in one search, or I can search in one of these databases. I'll have a smaller search results. Okay, then again, we have a search built in that just does this, does, does this, just does ebook searching right there for you with a reminder about your login. Okay. And then for books, similar thing, except the books are not accessible. Okay, so I've got my ebooks, my book books, sorry. So this is assuming that you'll be on campus to look at the books. Currently at this time, you may not be allowed to browse the collections by yourself. But when you will get to do that, you'll learn quickly that um, the way the library is organized is the same as all the universities, Library of Congress system. So you will find that certain areas or certain floors in bigger libraries uh, is where all your stuff is. So in here, we try to guide you to the areas of the collection when you can physically see them uh, where your stuff is. I knew exactly which floor, which area to go to in my library for my stuff. Okay, and then finally videos, online videos. So we have different kinds of online video. Um, and there's my list of recommended videos. And then we have the list of the providers for you. So we have videos that support your learning. We have the tutorial videos. And then we also have enjoyment videos, which we've never had before. So this product here, Criterion On Demand, uh, is for our film studies program and it has enjoyable movies. So if you're at the end of what Netflix can do for you, maybe Criterion On Demand will give you um, a reason to use the library for relaxation. Okay, so you can see all the different products there. So it just gives you an overview, okay? And once you're confident and comfortable with, oh, I didn't know that, for example, this product is not available in the OneSearch. This is where we'll put those notes that something is or is not available in the OneSearch then you'll know how to access it from the main page as well. Okay, so it just gets you going and starts. And uh, yes, I will cover the ebooks in a second. 
All right, so I'm going to go to the library page again, back. So once you've browsed your program guide and you're happy, uh, we can do a demo of searching the library, okay, using the OneSearch. So again, just to refresh, uh, the catalog button is where you go into an old-fashioned library catalog uh, where you can in-depth search for books or ebooks. And there's lots of nice tools in the catalog to narrow and change and refine your search of these contents. But these contents are also being pulled up into the OneSearch. Okay. The digital resources is the A to Z list of all the different subscriptions that the library has. Most of this content is being pulled into OneSearch. Okay. You would only want to use an individual database if it was not in the OneSearch, if it does a special search that you can't do in OneSearch, or if the content is really specialized and you want to focus. Okay, so just take a quick look at how the uh, digital resources list works. Okay, so we have our A to Z list. Uh, so if a teacher mentions the name of a database, says when you do this project, you can only use the CINAHL database. Okay, you can see what the heck is that? You can find it on this list. You can also find LinkedIn Learning. So I can go to L for LinkedIn Learning, right? And there's my LinkedIn Learning database, okay? I'm just gonna take a look at it uh, for you. You will see my view of it because I'm already logged in. It's a tutorial database. So it's videos and courses on how to learn how to do something. It could be related exactly to what you're doing in your course, or it could be something extra you want to learn, such as you're doing a presentation and you don't want to use PowerPoint, you'd like to use Prezi. Okay, I took a photography course in here. It's lots of stuff. So what it does is once you've logged in and everything, it remembers what you're looking for. So it will push stuff towards you um, because I, use this for students. I get all kinds of stuff, uh, but I can search across it. So I can search oh, project management. And I can look at the content by a course, by a video, by audio, by learning path. Learning path is a full course that you can take. Okay. You can also look at contents by how long it takes to complete, and the level. So you can look at a video tutorial on something and say, oh, I'm a beginner, but in this one I'm advanced, and change it, okay? And uh, the content in here is available to you as long as you're an Algonquin student, but there is a way to link your LinkedIn professional account with LinkedIn Learning. So when you leave Algonquin, um, the courses, the programs that you finished in LinkedIn show on your LinkedIn profile. Okay, even though you can't access them anymore after you leave Algonquin, they will show that you finished the courses in here so prospective employers can see them, which is nice. Alrighty, so if I showed you LinkedIn Learning, I'm going to show you Safari as well. So S for Safari by O'Reilly. There we go, Safari by O'Reilly. I'm going to open it. You'll see my incident of it, but this is logged in using your network account. Okay, LinkedIn. And Safari by O'Reilly. So this was originally an ebook collection for technology. It also includes uh, business, particularly uh, project management and accounting and HR, particularly. Really good stuff. Um, so you can search across it just like you did with LinkedIn Learning, but the ebooks are mostly from uh, particular technology providers. Um, so um, while the library does not purchase textbooks, Sometimes stuff shows up in here. Okay, so I can search across and see what's in here. So if I go Java, okay, so I can see that the books, videos, learning paths, or I can create a playlist, okay, of my own. So I can see what books are in here and go right to them, all right? And when you're in, uh, you can search within a book or you can go by table of contents. Okay, uh, the books in here are not downloadable. You have to read them online. All right, so that's some of the little weird different things about some of the packages that we have. Q&A looks quiet, guys. Okay, all right, how else can I browse around here? I can, I'm gonna turn that off. Browse by subject, so if I didn't know the um, 
subject guides existed, but found out about this and went in. I could do quite a bit of browsing and educate myself a little bit. So I can see how many databases we have per topic area. All right. So health and medicine. Do I want to have to do 43 different searches to search everything we have? And some of the databases will be searching differently, so I have to use new interfaces. No, I can search in the one search. Okay, so it's a nice feature. I can also find out which database have the content I want. So I can see the full list of newspaper databases or video databases, for example. So this is very helpful if you're starting your search. However, I consider the one search a starting point. So if I'm got an assignment, I have my subject, and I'm to the point where I'm refining my subject and making it doable. I will do a quick search in Google on that topic, see what kinds of results I'm getting, and I will do a quick search in the OneSearch also. It just gives me some ideas um, to make my search more interesting, to bring up some help with my topic as well. Okay, so I'm going to do a demo of the OneSearch search. I'm going to search a very large topic because if I searched a very perfect topic, I wouldn't be able to demonstrate any of the uh, tools that are inside the OneSearch. So think of it as a Google for the library, okay? And you're searching almost everything. You may need to talk to us and find out if there's a specific database for something. Um, but for example, the law databases are too complicated for OneSearch. They have to be searched on their own. So victimology, paralegal students, your teachers will guide you to using the specific databases and letting you know what the names of them are. So I'm going to log into my search and hopefully get asked to log in. Darn it, it remembered. Okay, when I click the search button, that's where it would normally have asked me to log in. And you would see that green login screen. It'll remind you what your login is and remind you what your PIN is, okay? Uh, if you are finding you're having error messages logging in, the number one reason it's you get error messages is you type your login wrong. So try it twice, close the browser window, open again, try it again. If you're still getting the error message, please contact us. Library Live Chat is fast and let us know your name and your number and we will check your account. Okay, you shouldn't have to set up your account. Um, the registration system talks to our library system and sets it up for you, but sometimes computers do funny things. Okay. So this is what results look like in the OneSearch. So your results, a high number of them, so this is just the library stuff, uh, 535,000 items, okay. And in the middle, pane or middle column, you'll see your results. So the first thing I'm getting is an encyclopedia listing. More than likely in a Google search, you will also get a, a, a Wikipedia listing at the beginning. Um, for college students, um, the rule of thumb is that encyclopedia is for getting ideas, not for getting content. So I always look at Wikipedia to learn more about my topic to make it more interesting, like learning that maybe my search should be global warming or climate change, or maybe I'm talking about climate change, or maybe I want to talk about um, what is affecting global warming or what will be affected by global warming. So looking at, at encyclopedias is a place to go to look at ideas to make your search better, not to get content. Okay, if you're going to get content from Wikipedia, follow the links at the bottom and find out where that stuff came from. Okay, so this is just there just to give me ideas to make my search better. And here is my result list. So it's starting with video recording. So you can see that in the databases, we try to make sure that the type of content's really obvious. And there's eBooks. Okay. So the database is a little bit more controllable than Google. So it's showing me right now results by relevance. This means that the words I typed into my search have to describe the item I found. Okay. Uh, Google will give you stuff with popularity. This is why sometimes you get excellent stuff and sometimes you get crap, okay? Because the popular sites are the easy to read sites. They not, might not be the scholarly ones you need for a college level paper, right? Um, in some classes, your teachers may say, we want to do current research, research about what's happening now. 
So how old the content is might matter to you. So I can see instead of relevance, I'd like to see the newest content the library has. This is really hard to do in Google. You can do it in Google Scholar though. So let's get that going. There we go. So same number. I'm just taking the same list and switching it around, putting it in order by date. So let's see what we have now. I have an academic or scholarly journal. It's from the Journal of Environmental Sciences and it was published May 2022. So very up to date. And there is the link that will take me from the OneSearch to the database where the content lives. So the full text is there. You're not being charged for it. It's right there. All right. In addition to the main bar, uh, if you look over to the left side of your screen, there are a bunch of tools that will help you limit, refine, change your results, change your search. And hopefully you'll get to explore all of them. Right now, I'm just going to point out two of the tools that are available to you. So you want to explore the whole list. These are all different things I can apply to my search. I can apply that the article is written in a certain language, that it was from Canada, um, that it was from a certain publisher, that it was on a certain subject. So I can play around with this. Uh, then I have source types. So this means I only want video, I only want eBooks, I only want scholarly resources. Okay, and this box here is the most popular things Algonquin students click on in the OneSearch. So the one there is scholarly peer-reviewed journals, academic journals. So this will take my 535,000 items, get rid of magazines, newspapers, video, and leave me with a list of just scholarly resources. So if that's what you're required to do for your assignment, you can get rid of everything else and be very clear of the content you're searching for. So it came down a little bit, the number of hits I had, the results I had, but now they're all from academic journals. Okay. We noticed that students were using the OneSearch more and more as a library catalog. So we've added the links there. So if you're here and you thought, well, wait a minute, I would rather look for an ebook or, or a book book, and I don't want to get out and go into the catalog. I'm here now. So I can say, okay, out of this, how many of these items are print books? So I have 46 print books. So out of that huge number we started with, 46 were books in the library. So I can see the books, okay, there we go, waiting for it to load. It'll tell you which campus it's on, okay. If it's at another campus, you want to make sure it's in the general or circulating collection so you can bring it to the, the, bleh, to the campus you, you are going to be borrowing from or is closest to you. All right, so this is for people that can come on campus, can get a student card and have a library account, but you all should have a library account. So I'm going to show you how to put a hold on an item so I can come on campus and the item is ready to pick up. So I'm going to retrieve catalog item. If you've used the public library, it's very simple, uh, very similar. Okay, there's my item, my book that I would like. I'm going to place a hold. If this, if this is not a, if you're not allowed to place a hold on it, if you're not allowed to check it out, place a hold won't show up. I want to place a hold. This is where it's going to ask you for your library account. Okay, so we, this is how we know to get it ready for you. Okay, so your library account, student number, okay, and your PIN is the last four numbers of your student number. Okay, then the library will get a message, we'll get the item ready for you to pick up at one of the three campuses, depending on how we do that, and we'll send you an email that lets you know that your item is ready to pick up. Um, the only difference between the three campuses is that the Ottawa campus has a book locker where we um, put holds in it and the student can come at any time, day or night, on campus and pick up their book from the book locker. So you're not restricted to um, 9 to 5 when there are staff available. Okay. So that's how you would place a hold on an item in the print collection so you can come in and pick it up. You can also come on campus and talk to the staff during nine to five hours or when the library is staffed 
and they'll search with you and go get the item for you. Okay. For those of you that will be on campus, we're so excited. All right. So that was a book. Let's talk about ebooks for those of you at a distance. So I'm going to turn off print book and I'm going to limit my search to ebooks. Woo! We have a larger collection of ebooks than we do print books. So yes, 805 versus 46. So 805 of the books on this topic are ebooks. All right. So again, the ebooks can either be read online or downloaded. Okay, someone was asking about a Kindle. Some of them can be downloaded to your Kindle. So you can read online or you will see that the tool is there for download. Okay, the download, um, the time you will have the item checked out in a download depends on what the vendor decided, the publisher. So it could be anywhere from 10 days to three weeks. Okay, for print books, it's two weeks plus two renewals. Okay. So I'm just going to open this ebook so I can show you some of the information that might be useful to you to know if you're going to use ebooks a lot. Okay. Somewhere on the page about the ebook, they'll tell you, can you print, email, or copy any of it? Okay. Some of them, some of the publishers will not let you do any of these things. So it's good for you to know as a student, can you do them? The other thing as a student that I think is great to know is, is this a single ebook or is it unlimited? I get happy when I see unlimited. So see unlimited copies? Okay. If you see unlimited and you don't download it, it's okay. You can go back in here as many times as you want, the book will be available. If there is one copy of the book available, someone can download it and then it's gone. Okay, so if you want to use something ongoingly and there's only one copy, you're going to want to download it or someone else will download it and remove it. Downloading is like checking a book off a shelf. Okay, so when you want to check a book out and not read it online, right, just, uh, there we go, I can read it online over here. And I'm not seeing the button right now for downloading on this one. It could be being hidden. Okay, I'm going to go back to find one that is a little bit more visible that I can download it. Okay, so the download process. The download process will require you to make an additional account. Okay, uh, this account is just to manage your checking in, checking out process, so it knows what you have checked in and checked out. Um, for this one, you can use a Google account uh, as your login. Uh, it could also be used for the databases as well, but if you want to check out eBooks, you do have to um, make a login of your own. Um, then it will walk you through the process of downloading. I have an account. I can show you. Okay, I'm going to use my Google account. Too many accounts to remember, really. Ta da! And then I can say how many days. So this one, oh, seven is the most that I can download this one. So this depends on what the vendor decided. I can decide on the download format I want to. And you can say I have Adobe Digital Editions or equivalent installed. Okay, so that's what if do you have a reader for the ebook to be read on? Okay, if you're going to go with the EPUB. And if you do not have a reader, you don't have to buy one, it will prompt you to download for free uh, Adobe Digital Editions. Okay, and there is a full help on the, the ebook download page. So after the seven days, this book will disappear from your device. Okay. All right, and the last thing I have to show you, the last thing. Um, some of you are going to be, uh, be concerned about citing and about referencing, okay? Um, this is why that subject guide is so important. It might be the first time you've heard about that. I'm going to let you know that all our databases are made for researchers. 
and they know that researchers have to do bibliographies and references. So they build these tools into the databases. For example, this book, if I click on the title of that book, down the side of the screen or along the top, depends on the database, you will get tools for outputting or dealing with this resource. And you almost always will see a site button. Okay, the site button will give you the format. It may not be perfect, but almost there. The format for your reference or bibliography page. So what is the format if I was going to use this book in a paper? Okay, the most popular format at Algonquin is APA, American Psychological Style. So I can go down through the list of different styles. And there it is, APA. This is the format, the pieces of information and the format I would need to put this book as a reference in the last page of my paper or project. Okay, so there is help for this stuff in the tools that we have at the library. Okay, so that is what I wanted to cover with you. Uh, it's a lot, but you can get in there and play with stuff and then come back with questions. Remember Library Live Chat and library at algonquacollege.com for asking questions. And um, if you have questions, please put them in the uh, Q&A. Uh, now, uh, Amy and I are ready for your questions. We did have one student who asked if you could uh, demonstrate one more time how to place a hold on a physical book. I can do that. I am the demo queen. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the main library page. Am I sharing the main library page with you? Amy, am I sharing? Yes, yeah, sorry, yes. Thank you. you. No, no, sorry. This is so much fun. Um, there, I am recording this session and I have to give it over to the orientation people. So I'm not sure where they're making these available, but I know I will make my recording available uh, through the workshop page on the library, the library website. And there actually is a copy of an older version of this on that page right now. So that's, uh, if you go into the library page, oops, look at that right in front of me. Workshops, very tricky, I get you to the workshops. And over here, I've got some resources and recorded. So there's an older version I've entered to the online library there. Okay, if you're looking for the recording until I find out where they're going to put it. Alrighty. Oopsie, crap. Sorry. Since I've been teaching online, I've been trying to be really, really good about not swearing so much. Okay, then I'm going to do a search on a topic. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to do a, a little bit more interesting search. And we're going to put a hold on a print book. Okay. I've got my, my card right next to me so I can show you. Okay, so I'm there. I can see the book. I'm going to go into the catalog from the OneSearch. And this one, I picked an ebook. Sorry about that, guys. It brought me into the ebooks. Hang on a second. Book books, print book. Sorry. Okay, so I've got five books on business leadership style and print. I am seeing them by relevance. I can decide to see them by date if I want to. So I'm going to retrieve catalog item from the OneSearch. And I'm happy because the place hold button is appearing in the catalog. So I can do the straight in the catalog as well. If I know I want books, you can go straight into the catalog. It might even be simpler. Place hold. I'm going to log in with my wacky number. So that would be your student number. And the pin is the last four numbers of your student number. I'm going to log in. And I don't need to save it. And then it says, okay, you want this book. Which library do you want to pick it up at? So do you want to pick it up at Perth, Pembroke, or Woodruff, which should be called Ottawa? Okay, so that's the idea. We can loan between the three libraries. So you can certainly have a book brought to the library that is easiest for you 
to go on campus at, and then I place the hold. At that point, it becomes invisible, and uh, the library staff is getting the email saying, get this book ready for the place where it ne needs to go, and they will let you know when the item is ready for you to pick up and explain the pickup procedure. Okay. You can also There we go. So I'm in the catalog here. Just one second. I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you another thing. Okay. If you are going to check out books a lot from the library, I'm going to show you a trick. If I go into the catalog, all right, up here you can see log out, my account, my lists. So under my account, I can see if I've made any checkouts, if I borrowed anything, when does it have to be returned? And I can see if any holds, and I can see if I have any fines. So that's in the library catalog, this stuff appears. Okay, so if I had holds, I could find out I have a hold. Okay, and this is also where you can um, renew an item you have checked out. Okay, you can certainly call us and we'll walk you through it, but this is also where you can renew a physical item and you can renew a physical item at least twice. So then you could have it for six weeks total. Okay, thank you for, I'm so excited to have questions about print resources for a change. You certainly can come onto the campus. Um, they would prefer if people came on campus that were had to be on campus for reasons, but study is a reason, using the library is a reason. We are restricted with seating. Uh, we only have seats for 50 people in the Ottawa campus, uh, 25 in Pembroke, and Perth I'm not sure about. It's a smaller space and they'll only have staff on campus three days a week. So you have to do all the Ovid, uh, Ovid the COVID protocol, and come on campus. Right, exactly. Good question. Sorry, Amy. I'm looking at the FAQ. <laughs> Ebooks will expire on their own. So for those of you that have panic about library fines, you don't have to worry about that with uh, ebooks. The materials will disappear off your device. Okay, and for books for your course requirement, you want to check your bookstore page. So you'd want to check the bookstore page or actually also in Access, a, your student's information system. But on the bookstore page, you can put in by your student number or browse by courses. Um, the library, unfortunately, um, you know that because we have 50,000 items, that would be more than the textbooks, at the, uh, that'd be less than the textbooks at the college. So we don't buy textbooks at the library. We may have them by accident. They may show up in a licensed bundle from an e-provider, but we don't purchase the textbooks. So you do have to make sure you check your textbooks uh, through the, the bookstore uh, to make sure you have them. 